As war rages between the stars, brave diplomats of the Alliance to restore the Republic seek support from far-flung worlds, strike bargains to secure resources, and struggle to keep the Rebellion fighting one more day. Set out on your own diplomatic missions and desperate allies, this rulebook expands upon the Age of Rebellion role-playing game, presenting new options for diplomat characters as well as any other characters interested in pursuing intrigue in the Star Wars galaxy. Persuade allies to the cause, weaken the Empire's grip on the galaxy, and pave the way to a new Age of Freedom. This is a review of Desperate Allies. Let's dive in. And here we have Desperate Allies, a source book for diplomats. This was published in 2015 by Fantasy Flight Studios, now Edge Studios. The introduction of Desperate Allies details how ambassadors work in the Star Wars universe, at least where the Rebel Alliance is concerned. It's all fluff, but if you like that sort of thing or are looking for ideas for an adventure or campaign, then you might actually enjoy reading through it. Voices of Revolution is the chapter for new player stuff. We'll have new gear, vehicles, and specializations tailored to diplomats. If you need some inspiration for a diplomat character, there are some backgrounds, or rather how diplomats function within specific specializations. It's worth a read through if you need an idea or two on you know, creating your own diplomat character. Diplomats also have a new duty. So we're gonna have things like counterintelligence, intelligence, internal security, operation planning, personnel, political support, recruiting, resource acquisition, sabotage, communication facilitation, tech procurement, and support. And remember, these are going to be tailored specifically for diplomats. We have three species for players. We have the Kamasi, Nemoidians and the Gossam. The Kemasi begin the game with a 3 in willpower, a 1 in cunning, and a 2 in everything else. Their wound threshold is 10 plus brawn, and their strength threshold is 11 plus willpower. They begin the game with 100 XP. They do begin the game with 1 rank in either charm or discipline, and they have an ability called Memni. Kamasi often imprint significant events in their life as unfading memories called Memni. Once per game session, a Kamasi may form a new Memnis that encompasses one scene or encounter. At any time, a Kamasi may perfectly recall any Memnis that he has formed or witnessed, or share it with another Kamasi or a foreign citizen of character. Nemoidians begin the game with a 3 in intellect and cunning, a 2 in agility and presence, and a 1 in brawn and willpower. Their wound threshold is 11 plus brawn and their strain threshold is 9 plus willpower. They only begin the game with 90 XP though. They do begin the game with one rank in either deception or negotiation. The Gossam begin the game with a 3 in cunning, a 1 in brawn, and a 2 in everything else. Their wound threshold is 9 plus brawn and their strain threshold is 11 plus willpower. They do begin the game with 100 XP. They also begin the game with one rank in Deception, and they are considered Silhouette Zero. Diplomats have three new specializations, the Advocate, Analyst, and Propagandist. A diplomat's career skills are Charm, Deception, Knowledge Core Worlds, Knowledge Lore, Knowledge Outer Rim, Knowledge Xenology, Leadership, and Negotiation. The Advocate adds Coercion, Deception, Negotiation, and Vigilance to that list. For the first tier in the talent tree, the Advocate has Plausible Deniability. Remove a setback die per rank of Plausible Deniability from Coercion and Deception checks. Nobody's Fool. Upgrade difficulty of incoming Charm, Coercion, and Deception checks once per rank of Nobody's Fool. Grid. So we gain plus one Strain Threshold. And Confidence. May decrease difficulty of Discipline checks to avoid fear by one per rank of Confidence. In the second tier, we have another rank of Plausible Deniability and another rank of Nobody's Fool. But we also add Discredit. Once per encounter, take the Discredit action. Make a hard deception check to upgrade the difficulty of one character's social checks once, plus once for every two advantages, until the end of the encounter. We also get Supporting Evidence. 
when assisting an ally with a charm, deception, leadership, or negotiation check, add an automatic advantage per rank of supporting evidence. In the third tier, we have another rank of grit, but we also have encouraging words. After an engaged ally fails a check, may suffer one strain to assist that ally's next check this encounter as an out-of-turn incidental. We have twisted words. When targeted by a social check, may spend despair or two threat and suffer one strain as an incidental to inflict strain equal to ranks in coercion on speaker. And we also have improved plausible deniability. Take an improved plausible deniability action to make a hard coercion check to convince one bystander per rank of plausible deniability to depart quietly. In the fourth tier, we have another rank of plausible deniability, we have two additional ranks of grit, and we have another rank of supporting evidence. In the fifth and final tier, we have blackmail. When an NPC exceeds his strain threshold, may spend one destiny point to convince that NPC to perform a single task of choice instead. We also have a rank of dedication, so we gain plus one to a single characteristic, but this cannot bring a characteristic above six. We have interjection. After another character makes a social check, suffer three strain to take an interjection incidental. Make an average vigilance check to add success or failure equal to success and advantage or threat equal to advantages to the check. And then we have contingency plan. Spend one destiny point to recover strain equal to cunning rating. The analyst bonus career skills include computers, knowledge education, knowledge warfare, and perception. In the first tier, we have Researcher. Remove a setback die per rank of Researcher from Knowledge Checks. Researching a subject takes half the time. We have Knowledge Specialization. When acquired, choose one Knowledge Skill. When making that skill check, may spend a triumph to gain additional successes equal to ranks in Knowledge Specialization. We have Code Breaker. Remove a setback die per rank in Code Breaker from checks to break codes or decrypt communications. Decrease difficulty of checks to break codes or decrypt communications by one. And we have technical aptitude. Reduce time needed to complete computer-related tasks by 25% per rank of technical aptitude. In the second tier, we have a rank of grit. We actually have a rank of supporting evidence. We have another rank of researcher. And we have valuable facts. Once per encounter, perform a valuable facts action. Make an average knowledge check. If successful, add triumph to one ally's skill check during the encounter. In the third tier, we have another rank of knowledge specialization and another rank of code breaker, but we also add improved researcher. On a successful knowledge check, character and allies gain an automatic advantage per rank of researcher on checks to act on those facts until the end of his next turn. We also have encoded communique. Upgrade the difficulty of checks to decrypt this character's coded messages without the proper cipher a number of times equal to computer's skill. In the fourth tier, we have another rank of grit. We have another rank of knowledge specialization, but we also add know-it-all. Once per session, perfectly recall an important fact previously learned as if a destiny point had been spent. And we have natural programmer. Once per session, may reroll any one computer's or astrogation check. In the final tier, we have another rank of knowledge specialization, but we add a rank of dedication and we have thorough assessment. Once per session, take a thorough assessment action. Make a hard knowledge check to gain boost dice equal to successes that can be distributed during the encounter. And we have stroke of genius. Once per session, make one skill check using intellect rather than the characteristic linked to that skill. The propagandist bonus career skills include charm, deception, knowledge warfare, and perception. In the first tier, we have a rank of grit, but we also have positive spin. Whenever any character's duty would increase, it increases by an additional one per rank of positive spin. We have in the know. Remove a setback die up to ranks of in the know from checks to get information from people or disseminate news. Minion NPCs do not realize this character's allegiance in interviews. And we also have cut in question. Once per encounter, when making a coercion skill check, the character may use deception skill instead. In the second tier, we have another rank of in the know and another rank of positive spin. But we also add toughened, so we gain plus two wound threshold, and we add improved positive spin. Once per session, if no PC's duty triggered, make a daunting charm check with the difficulty decreased once per rank of positive spin to have one PC's duty trigger. 
In the third tier, we have another rank of grit. We have a rank of confidence, but we also add well-rounded. Choose any two skills. They permanently become career skills. And we have bad press. Once per session, choose an organization and make a hard deception check. On success, organization members have their wound threshold reduced by one plus one per three successes until the end of the session. In the fourth tier, we have another rank of toughened, another rank of confidence, but we're gonna add dodge. When targeted by combat check, may perform a dodge incidental to suffer a number of strain no greater than ranks of dodge. Then upgrade the difficulty of the check by that number. And we also have informant. Once per session, may reveal a contact who can shed light on a chosen subject. On the final tier, we have another rank of positive spin, we have a rank of dedication, and we have another rank of in the know. But we also add improved in the know. Once per session, make an opposed deception versus vigilance check with the difficulty downgraded once per rank of in the know to have a target NPC believe specific false intelligence. Diplomats also have a new motivation. Creeds. This will involve things like power corrupts, strive for excellence, the body needs a head, order from chaos, never alone, return the favor, be unique, people are counting on me, balance must be restored, and living memory. And remember, these are going to be very specific towards diplomat characters. Diplomats also have two signature abilities, diplomatic solution and unmatched insight. Signature abilities are powerful, usually once per session abilities. These are attached to the bottom of a specialization that matches the career for that ability. There are also upgrades that you can purchase. Diplomatic Solutions base ability says once per game session, when a combat encounter against one or more sentient creatures is about to begin, the character may spend two destiny points and make a daunting charm check to turn the encounter into a social encounter instead. Unmatched Insights base ability says once per game session, during an encounter or scene involving one or more other sentient creatures, the character may spend two destiny points. The character immediately becomes aware of the emotional states and basic histories of up to three chosen participants in the scene. Tools of Intrigue is the chapter for new equipment. Surprisingly, there's quite a lot of weaponry and armor here for diplomats, quote unquote. For ranged weapons, we have things like the Defender Sporting Blaster Pistol, Military Holdout Blaster, ELG-3A, Mersan N4 Noise Grenades, Sorosub Wipe 3 Data Purge Grenades, Goshea HIC Mercy Grenades, and the Brain Keys Syndicate Knockout Mines. For melee weapons, we have Needle Gloves, Ceremonial Blade, Staff of Office, Stealth Vibro Knife, and a Sword Cane. For armor, we have Banal Apparel, Cargo Clothing, Diplomat's Robes, Flare Jacket, Hauling Harness, Holographic Costume, Lecter's Outfit, Noble Regalia, Performer's Attire, Powered Capacitive Armor, Resplendent Robes, and Second Skin Armor. For new gear, we have things like the Antidote Set, Authentication Tools, Concealed Recorder, Cultural Etiquette Manual, Communications Medium Manipulator, Data Dead Drop, Diplomatic Authorization, Expensive Jewelry, False Credentials, Forgery Tools, Insider's Guide, Integrated Public Address System, NAC Restraining Bolt, Merson Rider Ascension Pistol, Poisoner's Ring, Security Sweeper, Signet Ring, Slight Box, Sound Dampener, and a Species Database. We do have some new protocol droids to use, like the 3PX Series Protocol Droid, the 5YQ Series Protocol Droid, CZ Series Communications or Business Droid, the M3PO Series Military Protocol Droid, TC Series Protocol Droid, LRD Series Envoy Droid, and the LOM Series Protocol Droid. For new vehicles, we have things like the 8880 Luxury Land Speeder, the V35 Courier, the Hyperfoil 1000 XTC, the HA5 Aerial Retreat, the Baudo Class Star Yacht, the Curic Class Shuttle, the J Type Diplomatic Barge, MC18 Light Freighter, and the Kappa Class Shuttle. But we also get some modifications as well, like the environmental simulators, the luxury passenger compartments, the advanced subspace encryption array, and the holonet pirate array. Diplomatic missions is the chapter for GMs and includes tools and adventure ideas. We get tips for integrating diplomats into a campaign, which is definitely worth a read through if you have somebody who is playing a diplomat character. 
but we also get a how to for social encounters. It's all well and good, but we've already seen it in the Far Horizon source book. And aside from that, there are some specific social encounter ideas that are more geared towards being a diplomat, such as recruitment, morale, investigation, and peacemaking. However, there aren't really any new mechanics. So it sounds like a pretty dull source book, right? Well, it actually gets elevated to mid tier for me with the addition of rebel bases and upgrades. Bases and upgrades is really meant to be something for your players to sink their credits into for mechanical benefits and there are upgrades too. If you like the sound of playing something akin to Star Wars Rebels where they establish their own base of operations, then this book may be worth it for the base building rules alone. As I've stated before, this book is really only elevated to mid tier for me because of the base building rules. But if you don't really plan on utilizing that, then this book is probably going to be a hard pass for you. The specializations are actually unique and they do give your social characters something more to do. One of the signature abilities can really break a session. So the GM really needs to pay attention and plan accordingly if one of the players gets diplomatic solutions. Something else that I do like about this book, which is geared towards diplomats, by the way, is how much gear there is for diplomats in this book. Diplomats need to know when to start talking and when to pull out a blaster and start popping heads. And I'm really glad that there are options other than a holdout blaster. Well, that's going to do it for this review. Feel free to leave a comment down below. Give this video a huge thumbs up to support the series. And I will see you guys in the next video.